Good afternoon, guys. Today is Wednesday, the 28th of April. Today, we're going to be going over some stocks members watch list. And by the way, for those of you guys who are new or for those of you guys who are following along here, we were talking about this in Discord on what we should call this weekly show. Normally, it comes out on Tuesdays, but today it's going to be uh, or this week, it'll be Wednesday today. So uh, two different names that I wanted to rename this program. Um, I asked the guys in, in chat, what should we rename this program? So it doesn't sound so so boring because I'll come up with boring names. And so we have, I want you guys to put a um, uh, post in the comment section of the, underneath the video. Uh, the first name is Under the Radar with Prime. The second name is The Weekly Rodeo. Those are the two I have right now. If you guys can come up with any other names or vote on those two, Under the Radar or The Weekly Rodeo. I kind of like both of those. Okay, we're going to dive straight into, into it. Uh, right now, we're looking at the SPY. I'm not going to go over the SPY in today's uh, market analysis, but we're going to start with the very first one. And if you want to know what the timestamps are, go ahead and click underneath the video if you want to skip through all the boring stuff. Uh, I'll try to make it as bright as possible and not be so boring. The first one on deck, we have PENN. -N. I do like Penn as a company. I love it. I just don't like this price action. And the thing is, is we were talking about this on... on um, where were we talking about this? <laughs> we're talking about this on Sunday that so far it looks bearish to me as far as some sort of bearish consolidation pattern. And I don't like Penn until we get back above 97.09. Or the other way that I would like this is if we created higher highs and higher lows consolidating, putting in some sort of pattern in here that would pinch up against this 97.09. And then I would be willing and able to take a long position. I also said on Sunday, if you did go long to just keep a tight stop, because if we were gonna fall through, we'd probably fall through hard. So uh, for those, those of you guys who are long, I would now raise that stop loss up and I'm gonna kind of zoom in just a little bit, just so you can kind of see today's price action or the last several days anyway. You do have a gap down here, so there's gonna be a little bit of gap support in this area right here, which we see buyers kind of stepping up to underneath this gap. They call this the gap window. Underneath the gap window, this open space down in here, buyers are showing up here. So it'd be uh, higher odds that this is going to hold if the buyers continue to show up. It could create some sort of pattern in, in this range, maybe a tightening coil pattern, or uh, maybe we'll, we will get a breakout and create the higher lows. Something that I'd be looking at going long once again over 97.09, I think would be the highest probability, lowest uh, lowest risk trade setup that there was in Penn. But like I said, if you're long, just keep raising your stop loss up and we will see, we'll check back in with Penn over the weekend or maybe even on Sunday, just give me a reminder. Next one, AMD. AMD, I also brought this up uh, on Sunday, that Sunday stream we were watching AMD. We actually had two price levels in here. I forget where they were at, but they were in this consolidation in here. I think one was down here somewhere. Two lines going across the screen. I, I don't have those on here right now. And so I said I don't like AMD in this price action until we get a breakout or breakdown. And since then we did get a breakout and then we have a pullback, uh, quote unquote, let's just call this a possible back test of uh, this area down in here. Let's see if this support holds down here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and actually give you a, 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 the price on that. Just to be clear, just so we can kind of see what numbers we're playing with here, where we can find support. I think there's app, there's probably going to be a little bit of intraday support around $83.35. But to be honest with you, that we could see a pullback to a gap fill down here to $82.77. I think both of these areas are viable or even today's not that I like buying at the end of the day, and this is technically a bearish reversal candle on the daily chart. I don't like today's price action at all, but we do have to realize that today was earnings, or I believe this was from earnings, uh, maybe that came out last night or this morning. And as you can see, uh, prices gapped all the way up here to $88.89. So maybe this was profit taking, maybe not. It's hard to say if this is gonna be a one day event. I highly suspect that this is not gonna be a one day event. I think that we'll have a little bit lower prices down in here, but I also think that we can, do what we do as technicians and we can buy this wherever this breakout is. And I think that I would put either the line here or right here and see if we get some sort of uh, fall down into that price area. Let's see if we can get a resumption off of that price and then be willing to go long on that. Other than that, I like the breakout, just don't like today's price action in itself, in and of itself. Neo. Neo, uh, we did have a trade alert go out on Neo. And I don't remember the last time we talked about this. This might have been last. Maybe this was Sunday or I don't know. Anyway, we had a trade alert go out here back here on the breakout day just prior to breakout. And I do like this. I, I closed out the position pretty fast. 
we had a little bit of whipsaw pattern, uh, whipsaw signals in the broad market. So I didn't necessarily like being a lot of long sided uh, trades. But since then, we have broken out. We've we've come all the way up here to forty two dollars fifty cents, just just above forty two fifty. Maybe it's around forty four. Let's take a little peek here. Forty three dollars. Uh, so far resistance, let's see if we can get a higher low. We're now looking for a daily higher low as opposed to the low pivot down here. And so for those of you guys who are new, somewhat new, or even if you're not new, what we're looking for is this was the breakout. So now we're looking for a higher low. We're looking for the next pivot. And I'd be inclined to wait for the actual pivot to show up before going long if you're not already long right now. Just be very careful because Neo could fall all the way down to this price area down here. Honestly, it could come all the way back down to this area down here and still be bullish as far as the breakout goes. Now, let me get the 3,000 lines off the screen, zoom back out for a minute and take a look here. The question really becomes, this is an uptrend, right? This was a topping pattern. This is a sell-off. And then taking these trades down here look like bounces. Now to me overall on a bigger time frame, if I went out to the weekly chart, this would look like a giant bearish consolidation for usually resulting in lower prices. I'm not saying that that's what's gonna happen. I'm just saying as, a, as technical analysis goes, you have a down move, sideways consolidation in a really wide range, and then usually another down move. I don't know if that's gonna be the case for NEO. I think that we had what we put this on the screen here. We basically had a breakout back test, consolidation, and now we've broken out. That's kind of the where I'm leaning, but it doesn't mean I would go long today or tomorrow or even this week. I would maybe wait for that higher low to take a long swing trade, that is. Okay, next one. BBBY. And BBBY, this was kind of tied up in all the meme stocks. Supply shot up to $53.90. I, I, in one aspect, if you were a buyer down here around $23, well done, congrats. But another way of looking at this is this technically could still be bearish consolidation. And again, like we just saw previously, you have the down move, the flag pattern or bearish wedge, whatever you want, however you want to call this, it's bearish consolidation. It doesn't mean that it'll always play out to the downside. So what I would do is if I was long in BBBY, I would just raise my stop up to this area up here. I'll give you a price in a second. Uh, possibly here and maybe even just below this candle right here. And so the three prices I'd be looking to put a stop loss at 24.47, maybe one down here on 24.85 and a stop loss down here on $24.9. Let's, let's say $24.09. That's quite the range to the downside. So what, would, what I would be looking for in this name to go long is I would be the same thing as I'd be looking for you had this up move. I'm looking for a higher low on the daily time frame, or maybe even the weekly, uh, uh, some sort of higher low, or to consolidate enough that we could put a trend line across here and then wait for the actual breakout. That would set that would give us the highest probability, lowest risk trade setup is waiting for that actual breakout. Maybe not even taking the breakout, but on a, on a lower time frame, you could you could watch price and if it breaks out, back test on maybe a 15 minute chart, hourly chart, does some sort of. Um, uh, back test. Just I'm um, just want to humor, humor me for a second here. So this is the weekly chart, and this is what I was talking about. You have a, a really bearish candle in here, right? Just kind of like how you have one in here, and you notice a, you notice a pattern here where you have a huge reversal candle. Actually, to be honest with you, it's not that candle. That's the the reversal. It's this candle here. That's the reversal candle. This is the confirmation candle, and then you have a rally back up here, a back test, which overall this on a weekly chart is the bearish consolidation, and now you have lower prices. And honestly, there, there's market symmetry. Uh, so weekly time frame anyway on BBBY, that's what I was talking about. But back at the daily chart, now you can see what I mean as far as it, it really needs to get above these moving averages to become really bearish or really bullish. So let's keep an eye on it. Let's see what it does. JMIA. uh j m i a so i do i actually like what's going on here um it really depends on when you got in the trade but something that we can do is we can tighten the chart up just a little bit like this uh until it suits our needs um we could draw a trend line in right here or we can go across like this you can even draw one in kind of down like this it's almost a falling wedge kind of a pattern but i don't know necessarily that it is but it almost looks like one so if i grab this next one maybe if i pull up from the highs you know, hey, did it break out? I don't know. Maybe it already broke out. Uh, I don't think so, though. I think really needs a little bit more consolidation here. I do like what this chart is 
uh, what, what, what we're doing here. We have now possibly created a higher low today. If we got higher prices tomorrow, then th that would be this candle in here confirmed as a higher low. Uh, but for now, let me zoom in one more time. Now we're just gonna consolidate in between these moving averages. I do like the idea of getting kind of pinched in these moving averages. I like that the price is kind of falling down like so, and you can't see it on the screen, but if I pulled a cursor in here, you can kind of see like doing one of these. So price is, is doing its thing. Let it coil up, let it let it do its thing. Once we get higher lows and a tightening range to the upside, higher low scenario up to this resistance, then I'm looking for a breakout kind of a scenario as far as the tr swing trading goes. BA. Uh, like I said before, I love BA. I like that. Uh, I like the chart normally. Um, I forget what we talked about on stream on Sunday. I believe we talked about this pattern being bearish. Although I, to give BA a little bit of credit, I don't, these last three days are, you know, I think stream was on Sunday. So that was this, that was after 423, but it was before it was on 425. So these three candles weren't on the chart yet, but I said this, these three pattern, these three candles in here was a bearish price action. And you saw it rally all the way up here to 20, 244 and we've sold off from there. Probably wanted to go fill that gap. I think I have higher hopes for BA. I just don't know if it's ready yet. I think it needs to consolidate a little bit longer. Plus the economy and all the fun stuff that no one like, you know, maybe it's true, maybe it's not true. <laughs> Who knows what's going on with the economy? But I think that overall, this pattern in here, even if even if you do count these last three days, I think it's still technically bearish consolidation, usually resulting in lower prices. But I don't necessarily know that that to be the case as of yet. I really don't know. I think that price can just as easily consolidate right here. Uh, do the bouncing thing and maybe it'll maybe it'll break out something like that you know it's really hard to tell it's not giving me a signal right now that i would want to step into a long trade necessarily so we'll take it one day at a time i'll, ch I'll check it out tomorrow i'll post something if i end up taking a trade uh i'll post it in the discord for those of you guys who are not in the discord here is the commercial feel free to join the discord the link is in the description of the video also, feel free to hit the like button if you gain value out of this and subscribe. Bell notification. We go live Sundays, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Whew, okay, catch my breath. GSX. Is this one we're on yet? GSX. I don't know if we've talked about this one. I wonder what went wrong. It went from 149 down to $22 in a matter of... A couple months. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what this is all about. Uh, anyway, so I do like the recent price action. I don't like that it looks like it's going straight across. Like we were saying before, this could be a down move. Sideways consolidation usually results in lower prices. And when the when the daily chart isn't as clear to me, I like to go to the weekly chart, which we'll do here in a second. I don't like that we're below all three moving averages. I don't like that we came from 149 all the way down to 20 bucks that fast. Because something is oversold doesn't mean that it can't continue being oversold. And you guys will notice I don't ever have RSI on my chart. And that's why. It's because it doesn't really matter. I mean, I mean, I used to use it. I'm not saying if it works for you, that's great. For my trading anyway, the RSI does not matter to me. Uh, because I'll watch something continue being more and more oversold. And divergences, divergences, I used to use RSI divergence. And I no longer use it for the same reason that divergences can be burned off. Now I will use divergences for di between different markets, like let's say the IWM and the QQQ or the the, the SPY or whatever, but okay, I'll get off the, the box here, <laughs> GSX. I don't like the sideways action off of this down move, but I also think that there's something to be said that, the, that this name ran all the way up to this 150 bucks. Uh, maybe this was some sort of bad news. Maybe there's some debt. Maybe there's who knows. So let's go out to the weekly time frame and see if there's something else that I can see. We are at support on the weekly time frame, which is good news for the bulls uh, in this name. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it got below for a couple days and then broke back above. So right now, what I would say is this. If we can get above this weekly candle back here, which I've just kind of highlighted with the um, with the cursor here. Follow my cursor. This red candle in here, if we can get above that high, I think that we would have way higher likelihood of at least running up to the moving averages or halfway up this huge red reversal candle. Here's the little arrow. I think it'd be reason reasonable to go all the way up to six, $62.18. And to be honest with you, based on this last price action back here, I would not be surprised to see this thing really run. I'm sure there's a lot of shorts in here that would love to get squeezed out. 
or that wouldn't love it. <laughs> let's go back to the let's go back to the daily time frame. So as you can see, halfway up this candle, which would let's let's narrow this down. You guys can do this with me in real time and see how I kind of do this. Play with the numbers a little bit. I think I think we can shorten it from I don't know what we just said, sixty bucks or something like something. Let's say the first resistance is going to be around forty six dollars twenty four cents, and this is the reason why because this is prior support. And so that would be the first error that I would look at. I do realize we're cutting right through that red candle. It doesn't, but I've, you know, we see markets do this all the time. Um, the second thing is, is yeah, I do think that we could see possible numbers running all the way up to. I really want to put it here, but I think what would be more resi what would be more resistance than that? Yeah, we could put it right here. Right here. Here we go. I'll give you a price. Sixty three dollars eighty two cents. And then gap fill around $66.65. I do realize we're quite a ways away from that. One more thing as far as technical analysis goes. I believe that if you guys see this little wick up here on the top part of the candle, I believe that the opening print, which was, I'll give you the opening price. It was $61.19, which is right here. The opening print is the bottom. Come on. Are you kidding me? One more time. Here's the opening print. I think the opening print has more resistance than the actual wick itself. Now there are circumstances to that. It depends on what's in what's behind the chart, right? It depends on what other things we can see back here that would determine which one I use. But for what we're doing and for purposes of this, if we start getting above this candle in here on $40 area, which I don't think we're gonna do on the first shot, I think we're gonna pull back a little bit, so do something like that and then go. If that if this is what happens, I think there will be a lot more resistance around the bottom number than there is the top. I hope that wasn't too much on one little stock. <laughs> okay, OGI. Two more and then we're gonna wrap it up. OGI. Uh, let's take a little peek here. I like the price action. I like the pullback. I like that we came back to support. I don't know why it ran up to six forty five. Who knows? Uh, I don't know anything about this company. I do like the bounce off the two hundred period, which is the two hundred day moving average i like that i see that we're coming up into some moving averages right here i would not be surprised to possibly see a spike above the moving averages and then to see a pullback and so what i what, what i would be looking for now this doesn't mean that it's going to happen it just means that I, we've seen this too many times so what it means is i'd be looking at something like this like maybe a gap fill in here you'll see on the daily time frame it'll spike through and then or intraday it'll spike through and then it'll pull back off of that price area or maybe it'll come up to this one up here that's possible as well but i don't think we're just going to run all the way up to 340 350 on you know two days although it is possible we get some covering in here maybe it's a heavily shorted name off of these highs like who knows but i think that we could see a bounce like we saw last time maybe we'll see it we'll see a bounce up to 350. maybe on some really good news some sort of good news comes out we'll see that bounce but i think what i'd be looking for right now as far as do I want to get involved to the long side? I think I'd be waiting for a, at least to get above the moving averages, but I'd be looking for consolidation in here and that could look like this. It could be a little pullback in here, higher lows, higher highs up into a curling kind of behavior like it's kind of showing us right now. Although I don't think that curling is enough. I think the curl really needs to be with this kind of an angle and not like that. That makes sense, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, the moment you have all been waiting for. Let's hear it. Apple. It's not populating. That must mean that something's not going on here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's broken. Uh, Apple, where are we going? So right now we're after hours. 136.63 is the bid. The ask is 65 cents. 136.65. So you guys can do this with me in real time and I'll kind of sh show you what is going on here. Let's just take a look at after hours since I don't have it turned on ever on this one. Uh, let's say show after hours, just curiosity here. So what I usually do is I want to see it where the resistance is at. What I'm going to narrow down first is I'm going to go to, to current price and I'm going to really zoom in on it a little bit. So here's current price. So it looks like the high of this current price and is 139.50 so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a line on the chart saying 132.50 you guys can kind of see how i do it 132.50 let's put that on there let's say show price let's do show price on the left if i can get my mouse button to work awesome we'll delete it okay come on 139.50 and um Okay, here we go. 
Now we kind of see with the highs, and this is what I mean. What do I think is a more valid price action? Do I think it's this, like what I was just talking about a minute ago? Do I think it's this wick itself? I don't think it's the actual wick. I think it would be down here where you see the open and the close, or you'll see the close of this candle, the open of the next candle. So 137.89, I think would be more reasonable for Apple. I don't know if that's the case. I'm just saying like 137.85, let's call it that. 137.85, so that's the next one we're gonna use. 137.85, I'm gonna say show price on the left. I wanna see where the actual resistance is and where we spiked up to. Now what we're gonna do is, uh, well, technical analysis, I don't ever like to use technical analysis on after, after hour sessions or uh, pre-market. However, for what we're doing right now, I think it's it's okay because if this tagged a specific area on the daily time frame, on the daily chart or the weekly chart, if this tagged a certain area and I expect heavy resistance at that area, I don't know if this will hold and we'll see something just like we saw in AMD recently where you saw this earnings run up and then it, it had good earnings and then price opens up and then it fades the earnings just like Roku, Roku did this last year where it just fade, totally faded the earnings. So that's the thing is we could, we have to, I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm just saying, let's 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 go over the possibilities because we're traders, right? We go over the possibilities. We don't know what's going to happen. So now I'm going back back here and I'm looking at this. This is kind of jumbled back here. I'm going to go out to a daily time frame and see what is going on the daily. And so on the daily, we have 3,000 lines. Let's get rid of things that we don't need. We don't need the 132.50 anymore. We don't need these. I don't need this on here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually see if this is relevant. Now you now it starts to show up. Actually, two things show up, and this is what I mean by it could fade this. It could fade it because, for one, this is prior all-time highs back in September. This was the, I believe that was the vaccine high. September 1st or September 2nd high. That was the all-time high for Apple. It came up into that area again, and then, then this time it, it spiked that area in January and then that's called a failed breakout. It broke down, it rolled over. That was the failed breakout. And so if I kind of look at the chart and I say, okay, let's not look at both of those scenarios, even though that's possible, it's possible Apple will fade this. What is the bullish aspect of this? Well, the bullish aspect way of looking at it is that there's only so many times that we can run up into resistance before we'll actually break out. And this could be that breakout just like we saw on Google. Uh, and so I wanna know the bullish scenario and then Finally, the last thing that we're, I want to look at here is this price action up here in the this zone right here. And I'm going to kind of highlight it for you in case it's hard for you guys to see it. But we see the two numbers, 139.50, 137.85. And so in this area up here, you can kind of see why the price ran up to that area. So right here, you had a, it was having a hard time getting through this area. And if I go over to this part here, like I was saying, it's the opening print of this candle on, on 128. It's the opening print. And so on 128, you saw where price opened, it ran all the way up here to fill a gap, unless this candlestick is erroneous. I, you know, if there's some sort of error with this candlestick, I don't know. But let's say it, it ran all the way up here, it filled the gap, and then it sold off. Well, Apple right now, after hours, did the same thing. It ran all the way up to 139.50, and it's kind of selling off. So it's finding resistance at this, actually, it's finding resistance at this upper end one, and then the opening print on one candle closing print on another candle is the lower print one so what do i want to see for apple for morning what would be what would be extremely bullish for apple is if we actually open the day above this 139.50 now if we open up the day above one or above 137.85 that still is bullish in fact anything above anything above today's close is bullish to be honest but for me, an extremely bullish scenario is if Apple opened up above 139.50. I think that'd be really important. And what's more important than Apple opening up at 139.50? If it closes the day tomorrow above 139.50, that'd be extremely important. And so I think we want to watch it tomorrow. Now, what would buy, what would would where would I be a buyer? Why, If I'm not in Apple right now, is this buyable? Well, you could. You could be a buyer tomorrow if you're holding shares and you're holding it long term or longer term. You definitely could. I don't know if it'd be worth it to buy options tomorrow morning at the open. You could. You could buy some out of the money, deep out of the money, cheap options. You that won't kill you completely in time time decay. Would I buy a pullback all the way down to these highs? Because at that point, I would believe that at some point maybe we can get some sort of a pullback a quote unquote back test. And the, what I'm talking about is if Apple pulled back all the way to this area right here, because of course tomorrow it's gonna open up up here, open up up here, maybe here. Now, this is the thing though. 
where I, I do sometimes use after hours in pre-market technical analysis. I know because I put the lines on the chart, I know that Apple got up to this price in after hours today. So let's say tomorrow price opens up below this 137.85 and then trades back, trades down to this area down here. I'm not gonna be a buyer. You could be a buyer. I just, I'm choosing, I'm, I'm not going to. I would love to be a buyer. I would rather be a buyer if Apple opened up above 139.50. Not that I like chasing price, I'm just saying. I would I would rather be a buyer than if Apple opens up below 137.85. I hope I don't lose you guys. If it opens up below this 137.85 and comes down here to give everyone the impression that it's gonna do a back test, I would not be a believer at that point. I think that that is a, a gap and crap in the making. I think it would be extremely bearish. I, I think that it would look like A and B. It's fading the earnings for whatever reason. It's fading it. Now, to the upside, let's zoom back out for a brief second here. Let's say we are holding Apple. We've been holding it for a while and we're looking for continuation regardless of wherever price opens at. This in itself, another thing I'd be looking at is this is the last major pivot down here. And I'm not saying that price is going to do this, but it is possible. So we have to actually recognize this. This is market symmetry to the upside. You have a the bull flag. Uh, it is possible that we do this. And what's really interesting about this scenario, which would be out of all of the cases, this is the scenario that I think would play out. This is probably the highest probability setup is right here is highest probabilities. And then the second highest probability would be the uh, gapping in the middle here, and then the lowest probability would be a gap and crap completely, which we'd see like we saw in AMD. AMD. But let's say we do get this market symmetry to play out to the upside. That's really interesting because that's right around this 145.09 all-time highs. Now, this is where the broad market, we want to focus in on what the QQQ is doing. We want to know what the SPY is doing. We want to know what the broad market is doing for this reason. If we have an extremely bullish day tomorrow in the broad market and everything is up, it's highly likely that Apple is playing out the, this last scenario that we talked about, which is this amazing bull flag, and did give us this 145 price target. Above 145, there are no more price targets. You ride it as long as you can. But the price target that I would give it as of right now, where I think that it could have a high potential of getting to, would be this 145 price area. I'm going to leave the video at that. I know we went over Apple in great detail. Hope this helped. Feel free to hit the like button if you gain value out of this video. We will see you guys in the next one.